Hello, and thank you for this opportunity to join Mayor Gertler and Daniel Wolf in sharing some of my thoughts about the future of higher education in Canada and how we are working to provide a high quality education that prepares all eligible students for the inclusive economy we are building. I want to begin with the current status of Canada's university educated population. The email advertising this event noted that Canada was recently named by the OECD as the world's most educated country with an astonishing 50% of its population completing post-secondary education. To be clear though, that figure includes both college and university completion, which together boosts us to the top spot for post-secondary education as a whole. Canada actually ranks seventh behind Norway, the United States, the Netherlands, the UK, Denmark, and Australia in terms of university completion. This observation is no mere quibble if we hope to create the knowledge economy to which we aspire. Relatedly, we are not as inclusive as we need to be in attracting students from a range of backgrounds. Consider for a moment the significant underrepresentation of Indigenous students or women in science, technology, engineering, and math, or the percentage of Black students. We need students from diverse backgrounds for three reasons. First, we want to be sure that we are not leaving behind talented potential contributors. Second, the knowledge economy is a global economy. It demands people with language and cultural skills that enable them to work across borders. Third, we enjoy a stable, if not always harmonious, social order, partly because historically, the rate of upward mobility of Canadian immigrants has been rapid. However, that rate has slowed since the 1990s. The most recent OECD employment outlook from 2017 does conclude that the majority of OECD countries have managed to better integrate women and potentially disadvantageous groups into the labor market, but more still needs to be done. We need to do a better job, not just in attracting students to university, but in attracting a diverse range of students to university if we are going to build an inclusive economy and if Canada is going to be competitive worldwide. I'm not intending to minimize the importance of college education. Two thirds of all newly emerging jobs will require some post-secondary education, diploma or degree. So colleges play an important role in increasing the overall percentage of the population with some post-secondary education that will improve their life circumstances. At the same time, between 2008 and 2017, 1.6 million new jobs were created for university graduates, almost three times those created for graduates of all other types of post-secondary education combined. University graduates have low unemployment rates. They are more likely to be working at a job related to their academic studies and have the highest lifetime earnings in Ontario. On average, university graduates earn 58% more than graduates from other Ontario post-secondary programs. As we look to the future, Canada's economy is on target to add 2.4 million jobs over the next four years. The labor market trends will be profoundly affected by technology and computerization, as well as the globalization of economic markets. So while we may not necessarily right now need to worry about Isaac Asimov's prediction, which goes something like this. In the factory of the future, there will be a man and a dog. The man will be there to feed the dog. The dog will be there to keep the man away from the machinery. Nevertheless, as a recent RBC research paper, Humans Wanted, How Can Canadian Youth Thrive in the Age of Disruption has suggested, 50% of Canadian jobs will be disrupted by automation in the next 10 years. Some jobs will be de-skilled or eliminated altogether, while new jobs will emerge to invent, design, advertise, market, install, repair, and maintain complex machines, including computerized and robotic systems. Generally speaking, the fastest growing sector is the service sector. And while de-skilling has occurred for some of those jobs, more of the growth has been associated with an enlargement 
of skilled employment requiring higher levels of conceptual autonomy and complexity in skill sets. Industries projected to have the strongest employment growth between 2017 and 2026 are those related to professional and scientific services, including computer system design, healthcare, media and entertainment, and non-automotive transportation equipment, including aerospace, railroad, and shipbuilding. Daniel has already discussed the implications of that for skills. So yes, there will be significant increases in careers demanding digital fluency, as well as human skills across all sectors, critical thinking, social perceptiveness, active listening, and complex problem solving. So to conclude with my final point then, this means that we will need to leverage opportunities for universities to help us build a competitive, inclusive economy for Canada. As inequality rises, countries tend to be less prosperous. And if you look at countries with high inequality, there tends to be a poor match between educational qualifications and labor market outcomes. Important to leveraging the full value of a high university participation rate are two factors. One, collaboration across sectors, and two, Canadian policy aimed at creating favorable conditions for an inclusive economy where there are good outcomes for both individuals and for business. So key to building an inclusive, competitive economy is strengthening collaboration between those interest groups with the biggest stakes in university education. We might take our cue from Denmark, one of the countries that outshines us in terms of university completion rates. In Denmark, umbrella organizations of universities, corporations, and government consult regularly and frequently with each other. They sponsor research that helps them decide on areas of the economy that are likely to experience employment growth. This arrangement has been helping to keep Denmark's per capita income higher than Canada's, its employment rate lower, and as surveys consistently show, its people happier. In short, it seems to me that if one favors a system of higher education that is well suited to the needs of this country, in particular, the need for more university graduates from more diverse backgrounds to achieve rapid upward mobility. We need better coordination between government, universities, and employers to help ensure a match between labor force skills and the needs of the economy. This goal has broad implications for how we think about learning, the importance of collaboration with other sectors, expanding experiential education, the permeability of university campuses, and the importance, fundamentally, of partnerships. Thank you very much.